Hello there, my name is Ali Robertson. I work for University College Isle of Man. And today I'm going to give you a demonstration on the um, Hadoop and Bari um, database system. Um, in earlier updates, I gave you a presentation on Ambari Hadoop and the general um, application space of the HCFS Hadoop ecosystem. Um, the last presentation I gave you was on the data warehousing concept using Hive as the principal candidate. Uh, this session builds on that and shows you a genuinely NoSQL uh, database called HBase, uh, which works under the auspices that you shouldn't have a, a schema as such planned up before you create your database. You don't need it. Um, but also it stores all of your data in one singular big table um, and so it's therefore a little bit Google Big Table-esque in the, the way that it does things. Um, it's a very useful and easy to use system and I've got a series of commands here for text in white which I'm going to run for you in a live Ambari server environment um, just to show you the simplicity of how to uh, use this type of tool in a, in a workplace environment. First of all in my command line interface I need to connect on to my server so I should have that command stored there. It's just doing that now. Let me put the passcode in. So that's me connected to my uh, Ambari server sitting in the corner, which I built myself. Very useful bit of kit for this sort of demonstration. I'm now going to launch the HBase shell, which will give me access to its command line interface. Before I get going, I can't remember uh, what databases I've actually got uh, live and running. So while this is queuing up um, HBase, I'm going to have a quick squiz through uh, and actually uh, see what's, what databases I've got stored. There should be one there called Motorbikes, and if there is, I'm going to delete it because I'm going to recreate it to show you what it looks like. Yes, I've got data in there. That's what the response tells me. So I'm just going to quickly um, disable Motorbikes. I hate disabled Motorbikes. And then I'm going to drop Motorbikes. Be careful with that command in a production environment, of course. No dropping databases that shouldn't be dropped. Now, in the middle here, I'm going to start running through all the commands that I've put together, which should give you an insight about what a NoSQL coding uh, dialect looks like. Um, so first of all, let's create a um, database. It's called Motorbikes, uniquely enough, um, from the Isle of Man. We collect motorcycles. We uh, usually have one or more motorcycles to give you an insight as to what sort of people we in the Isle of Man can be. And so I've now created a table called Motorbikes. And if I type scan, uh, motorbikes, it should just show up that I have a ta table in there called that. Uh, yes, it's motorbikes. It's got zero rows and no data stored within it. So let's cure that. I've got my table. Um, it actually has uh, two columnar families, one called rider details. No guessing, I'm going to put my name details in there, my age, those sorts of things. But I've also got bike details. But under each of these column families, I can have as many columns as I want. It could be unique to the individual row. So it's therefore the individual user, depending on what they want to store, depending on what you want them to store. So let's just do some simple stuff here. Let's just put in the first row into the table. And the syntax of this is as follows. Put into motorbikes, which is the database I've just created, a first row called rider details. So put it into the family name, rider details, name. So it's the first column. And then add Ali as the unique piece of data stored in that. I'm now going to do that for my age. Same syntax, but I'm putting it into an age column this time. And paste, and enter. And then do the same for the actual first motorcycle, which is a Honda that I own. And then the same here the year of that machine. You can almost imagine that I'm putting together a, a website where people can store the details of their motorcycles, like a, like a Facebook type thing for motorcyclists, where they can add in lots of details about their motorcycles. But therein lies the rub. Um, as they on the Isle of Man, many people own more than uh, one motorcycle. I've got eight motorcycles. So um, it's more the question of how do I manage that on a site like this. Actually, I'm, I'm going to be different from, say, somebody down the road that's maybe got 20 or 30 motorcycles, or someone that's got two or three. We're all going to have different columns. The problem is with uh, SQL, you have to build a relational um, database to try and handle that kind of thing. But uh, with this NoSQL type approach, which HBase provides, you don't need to do that anymore. You don't have to think about joins or anything. It's just one row, one load of data for each user, and all of the information stored in one long, long, long row, as long as you need it to be. So I'm going to add in 
a new common family name called Bike Details 2 for the second bike. I hope that use case makes sense to you. I'm going to copy that, drop it into space, and enter. It says here, all the regions have been updated. That means if I'm using my genuine supercomputing cluster of machines here rather than my Mac Pro, uh, then um, if the table was spread out across all of the different machines in different regions, then um, they would all be updated with that new column. So everything is maintains uh, integrity and consistency in what you want. I'll now add in my second, second motorcycle details. And then add in the year of this new Yamaha. Can't be new, 1985. If it was my dream 1985 motorcycle, it would be a 250LC Yamaha. And I can dream about paying £4,000 for that, worth a lot more now. But we'll just put that into the database. Let's have a look at that database and see what, what it's done with all my information. And enter. So it's got all of my information stored in there properly now. I'll just rerun that command again so it comes in a nice, neat set of lines. Um, and so you can see here straight away, got all the old stuff, Honda, 1992, Yamaha, value 4,000 pounds, 1985. Notice I haven't got the value for the Honda, I don't need it, I could have added it in, I could add it in uh, now, that wouldn't really be a problem. But let's add that in now, let's get that stored safely. Um, and so I'm going to put into motorcycles one, bike details, value for the Honda, about 2,000, and enter. Let's scan that again, and there it is. Value for my Honda is £2,000. Value for my Yamaha is £4,000. Yeah, it's looking good. Let's go back to script. That's going to tell us where we go next. I've got um, another customer that's come our way. She wants to add her details and her motorcycles into the system. So her name is Jane. I'm just going to add Jane's information into the system now. You can imagine a web interface doing all this for you, new people signing up. This uh, database can grow very quickly, very quickly indeed, and that's exactly what you want it to do. By giving it, um, using it in HDFS, and using HBase, you give it every opportunity to be big as you can afford for a cluster of machines, say in Amazon Web Services, they run exactly the same tools. Um, or in Microsoft Azure, again, they use exactly the same Hadoop service there, uh, which is always an interesting point to note that all of the proprietary uh, users of code, the ones that produce their own, are now actually starting to resell this open source, source stuff from Apache, which I'm not, not surprised, it's so well built. It rarely lets you down, it's just very tight and just works. And the Ambari overhead is wonderful, it makes that so much simpler. Um, so that's me, now I have James details in there. So if I can have a now quick look at my database, get all the information, and uh, there is Jane's stuff that's gone in very well there. Jane, with her Kawasaki, valued at £1,800 pounds or thereabouts. Okay, another use case. We're going to add a third rider, but we don't want all data added. In this case, Joey would like to be kept a little bit private. So he just wants three bits of information added, his name, into the um, rider details family, under name. We're just going to put the make of his Honda, the make of the bike, which is a Honda. And then the year of that bike as well. And away it goes. And um, Joey um, actually has decided that he wants to actually add a little bit more detail into his motorcycle collection. So he's actually going to add in um, the make of that bike as well, the actual model, not the make, the model we've got to make, but let's add in the model. In this case, it uh, will be a very nice Honda NC30 VFR400R. And so let's have a look at what that information looks like. Bear in mind, Joe is the only one to have a column of that type. And here we have Joey. He's got his Honda. No value for it, but he has got the value for it there. Uh, sorry, it's no value for it um, 
Honda, but we, he does have a uh, the model number there, NC3400RR. So that's doing different things for each of the different people I'm mentoring them. Now, final use case. Ali calls in and um, he just wants to have a look at the information with motorcycles, not his information. So what I need to do here, let's have a look at just the motorbikes that I've got, the two that I've got entered in there. There they are. So I've just put in this get command here, uh, which is a little bit different. So get motorbikes for user number one, row number one, bike details one, and bike details two. And that presents just that information. Final, final update for Ali is he no longer wants to have his details stored um, on your service, so you have to delete them. I wanted to delete an entire row, and I can delete to just columns and that for an individual, not to have to delete everything. I'm going to show you the extreme case where I delete all from motorbikes, row one, so that's been bye bye Ali's persona within this environment, and enter, and then we'll do the scan motorbikes. And you'll see in the row numbers here, one is not to be seen. It's been deleted. All nicely compliant with GDPR if that was the case. Um, in a um, SQL database, that would be much more complicated to unwind all that information. Just as a final theoretical note, all of the details that I've got left in this database, uh, notice I have some columns for some people and no columns of that type for another person. Um, it doesn't conflict with what I'm doing because I can add that in later on. But also, when I don't add any information in, it takes no physical disk space. Unlike SQL, where if you have a row with nulls in, those nulls actually count on the drive space, the physicality of that drive space. So HBase is very economical in the way that it stores information, information uh, relative to, say, something like a SQL database. That completes my presentation for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope, you met, hope that's given you some insight as to uh, the coding um, requirements for HBase. No doubt it'll be very similar for other NoSQL type databases that will do it in a slightly different way. Thank you.